Hello, Bethel College students, um, faculty, anyone listening. Um, I'm super excited to be here today. I wish I was there uh, with you guys on your campus and and uh, face to face, but I'm here in my office and I'm getting a chance to to share some thoughts with you and and get away from my normal work. So I couldn't I couldn't be more thrilled uh, to have this opportunity and and um, you know I hope you guys have had an awesome start to your fall semester. Um, I hope you're staying healthy and safe during this crazy time and and uh, really trying to operate responsibly on your campus if you're there and um, out in your community communities to really minimize um, you know the spread of of this virus. I wasn't exactly sure uh, what direction I wanted to go with this lecture. Um, I know I'm speaking to a group of individuals with a wide range of interests, and of course, um, I hope I can share some thoughts that are relevant to everyone listening. So the title of this talk is Finding Your Why and Naming Your Core Values While Embracing the Process of Chasing Excellence. And then, you know, for me, that's, this is going to be from the perspective of in the game of basketball. Um, but I, I'd really like for each of you to take a second and, and change the words there that are in those parentheses. Um, you know, think about what it is that you're passionate about or, you know, in what area or areas are you pursuing excellence right now? And hopefully something comes to your mind pretty immediately and you can uh, then listen to this talk and view what I'm, you know, trying to say uh, through your own personal lens. So I'm going to actually start um, by telling my story. And I was not born in 1991 uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but this is just uh, the part of my life, 1991 to 2015. Um, that I think, you know, is, is relevant to the bigger point of this lecture today. And, and so I don't want to bore you with, you know, my story. That's, that's certainly not the point. But I do think, I do think there's, um, you know, just some, some things that we can use as an example from my story. So uh, who am I and why am I here today recording this lecture uh, for the students of Bethel College? I guess the most obvious answer to that question is, um, you know, I, I have something in common with many of you in that I grew up in a small town um, in the state of Kansas, actually just down the road from Bethel. And so even though I didn't actually attend Bethel College, um, I have a ton of friends who did and many acquaintances. And I have, you know, really good familiarity with your school and, and your traditions of excellence across the board, you know, in, in the classroom and academics and also in your sports programs. So, you know, like I mentioned, I grew up just down the road, actually in, in the little uh, community of Heston. And my story kind of starts when I was nine years old. And um, I was actually at a birthday party doing what uh, you do when you're nine at a birthday party. You stay up all night and you watch movies. And at some stage, uh, we watched this movie called The Pistol. And um, it's, it's about the late, um, great basketball legend, Pistol Pete Maravich. And I don't, I don't recommend you watching the movie. It's, it's super corny, but for a nine-year-old, um, you know, it's okay. But for whatever reason, uh, while I was watching that movie, something really inspired me um, to, to begin to love the game of basketball. Now, you know, up, up to that point in my life, I liked sports a lot. Um, you know, my, fam my family spent a lot of time out in the driveway playing basketball, out in the yard, doing soccer and baseball and football and you name it. Like, I love sports um, and I was involved in any, any sporting event that I could be at that stage, but I hadn't really zeroed in on any one sport, um, you know, that was sort of my favorite. And I don't know why, but that night at that birthday party, watching that movie, um, I became, like I said, just really inspired and, and I really began to dream about playing basketball at the very highest level. Well, at the time, the highest visible level for a woman um, was the NCAA Division I level. You know, there, there was no WNBA at the time, um, and, and pro leagues did exist um, overseas in Europe, and there was a small league in, in America, but, you know, no little girl in, in middle America had any idea that those actually even existed. So I set a goal when I was nine to play Division One basketball and just really became an obsessive worker um, toward that goal. Like everything I did revolved around that one goal. You know, I woke up every day with one purpose, and, and that was to practice and practice and practice, um, you know, in order to find a way to achieve that goal. Now, at the time, um, I had no clue uh, what I needed to do to, to reach this goal or how to work out. And, you know, there were no personal trainers. There were no YouTube videos or teams to play on when, when I was nine. So I started off by doing 
um, the only thing I knew to do. I, I watched I watched that movie over and over again, and I started practicing the drills that I saw the little actor do in that movie. Um, for whatever reason, I thought it would be kind of a high value uh, activity to shoot 100 free throws every day. And so that's kind of, and I was super disciplined even at nine. Like I did those things every single day. Well, obviously, as people started to, um, you know, realize that, that, I really liked basketball and wanted to be good. You know, different people gave me tips and pointers along the way. And by the time I was 12, I had a 500 shot uh, shooting routine that I did every day. And by the time I was 14, that moved up to 800 shots a day. And when I say every day, like I did it every day. If I missed a day, then the next day I just did double. So if I missed a day of my 800 shot routine, the next day I'd do 1600 shots. And I never took a day off, you know, rain, snow, sleet, wind, hot, cold. Um, you know, you guys are real familiar with weather, weather patterns in Kansas by now. And, um, you know, it didn't matter. My, my goal really drove me to operate with a big work ethic and with a lot of discipline. And, and you know, nothing could deter me from, from doing the things I thought I needed to do to reach that goal. Now, that was my big goal. My big goal was, was being able to play um, Division I basketball. But um, as you can imagine, I had a lot of shorter term goals along the way as well. Um, you know, there was a local free throw contest um, for elementary and middle school kids in, in Heston every year. And, you know, I knew I, I set a goal at the beginning of every year. I knew exactly how many free throws I wanted to make that year out of 50. And I, 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 it was so seared in my mind. I remember to this day that the first goal I set was I wanted to get 40 or more out of 50. And every year it got a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and by the time I had outgrown that contest, I remember I was wanting to make over 45 out of 50. Um, and, and, and the fact that I remember that, I'm, I'm not telling you that just to give you weird, boring facts about my life, but the fact that I remember that just shows kind of how obsessed I was with reaching each goal I set to myself, set for myself. I mean, to think that that was so much at the forefront of my mind that however many years we are now, 30 years almost later, um, I still remember those numbers. Just kind of gives you an idea about my mindset and where I was with, with how I approached my goals. And then also there were goals of, you know, playing on the varsity team right away as a freshman and then goals of winning state championships. And, and I, you know, I could go on and on, but I think you get the picture and, and kind of the rhythm of what, um, you know, my school years were like, or, you know, just as a young, a young kid dreaming about being the very best basketball player I could be, sort of how I approached that. And so to make a long story short, um, I, after playing at Mound Ridge High School uh, with a lot of awesome teammates, some that actually ended up coming to Bethel and playing there, um, all of them helped me reach many of those uh, goals and helped help some of those dreams become a reality for me. I ended up uh, reaching my big goal and headed to Kansas State um, and actually to play with uh, your current um, women's assistant basketball coach, Nicole Oldie. And uh, there are stars around her on this little presentation because she was an amazing, amazing player, like a thousand times better than I was. And if you guys aren't familiar with her and don't know who she is, you need to look her up. Um, you need to read about all that she's done and all that she's accomplished. And then uh, most importantly, you guys need to go in and support your women's basketball team. Uh, when you do, uh, when they do get back on the court this year, because I'm telling you, her, her and her husband um, are, are the coaches and, and that thing is definitely moving in the right direction and they're going to be fun to watch. So get out there and support them. Uh, that's just a little side note. But um, we did, we had a chance to, to really um, accomplish probably more than we ever dreamed of at um, Kansas State and, and succeeded at a pretty high level. And and after that, of course, I set new goals and I went on to, to play professionally for 10 years all over the world. And I even got to play five years in the WNBA. And, uh, you know, I just I got to see my hard work and my dedication and self-discipline and persistence toward toward my original goal of playing, um, you know, in college pay off in bigger ways than I could have ever imagined as a nine year old. And, you know, you might listen to this story and think, oh, you know, what a great success story about a person who worked hard and made sacrifices and sold out toward her dream and then, you know, kind of got to see it all become a reality. But believe it or not, um, the reason I tell you this story um, is more as an example of what not to do, at least in, in some ways. When I reflect back on, um, on my years as a player, I think there's really some big life lessons to learn. So, you know, the topic of this lecture is finding your why. That's one of the probably main, main reasons we're doing this. And, 
And I tell you this piece of my story because I do, I want you to think about my why throughout my playing career. And you don't have to think very long or hard to figure out that my why was always centered at any given moment in my career. It was always centered on a goal that I had set for myself, you know, win a free throw contest, play on the varsity team, win state championships, become one of the best players in the state, make it to the division one level. You know, there was certainly always a theme. And, and every time I accomplished one of those kind of bigger goals, um, one of those goals that I thought could satisfy me and make all my hard work seem worth it, you know, I just set a new goal, a bigger goal, and started working toward that one. Now, don't mistake, you know, what I'm saying. I'm not an anti-goal person by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, you know, I believe my goals and my drive um, to achieve something made me develop a fanatical work ethic and, and really highly disciplined behavior. And I learned to sacrifice things, um, which we can probably all agree are really good character traits. But what I am trying to say is that, you know, when a particular outcome is your why and you achieve that outcome, then what? You know, you certainly get a sense of accomplishment. You know, you definitely gain confidence, you build self-esteem and you might even be really happy. But the big question is, how long do those feelings actually last? Oh, yeah. So goals, 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 goals. I think we get the point there, right? All right. So I just now I want to I want to um, share just this short video clip from Anson Dorrance um, that summarizes the point I'm trying to make. And and Anson, he's a uh, you know, you can you can read there what he's done, but he's absolutely accomplished you know, everything that any sports person, you know, at the college level ever hopes to accomplish. I mean, this guy's won 22 um, out of 32 possible NCAA national championships as a soccer coach at North Carolina. Um, he's, he wins 90% of the time. Over 33 years, um, he's got a 0.907 uh, winning percentage. So um, just, just, you know, again, this is someone that's speaking um, you know, that has the perspective of he knows exactly what it's like to reach every goal you could ever set. And, um, you know, he's done things at a very high level. So let's listen to what he has to say, actually, um, about championships. Make sure my volume's up. I use the roses because it's such a great visual of what really happens. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, I'm not one of these guys that uh, believes in uh, championship rings or trophies or anything. Uh, the sort of a reward we give our kids for championships is actually flowers. We have certain uh, flowers for uh, ACC uh, regular season championships, certain flowers for ACC tournament championships, and we actually use red roses for national championships. And the thing that's really cool about a flower as sort of symbolic of the championship is it dies. It dies relatively quickly, and for me, that's that's the perfect uh, symbol of what a championship's all about. All right. So, so what's the point he's trying to make? You know, I, I think that the point he's trying to make is that sh that you're never going to find fulfillment if your entire why um, is wrapped up in some final destination or particular outcome, which you know that in this example is championships. And, you know, I went through most of my playing career, setting a goal, reaching that goal, feeling really good about it for a couple of days, then realizing it didn't make me as happy as I thought it would and setting a new goal, right? I use the roses. So, um, you know, I've learned that my why has to be found in the process of growing in things that really matter, my character or who I am. Um, you know, who I am and who I am becoming are far more important things than what I do or what I accomplish or don't accomplish. And, um, you know, I've learned that that's true in every area of our lives. One of the things, this, this screen that's up there, the slide that's up there now for you, um, that, that I think is so true and, and something that we've used with our teams um, here at Washington State is uh, this little acronym CPR. And, you know, you can see like C is greater than P, which is greater than R. And ultimately that means that character is the most important thing. And, you know, the process is the second most important thing. And the least important thing is the result. Now, um, you know, you guys all know by this point in your life that um, 
We live in a results-driven world and America is the land of opportunity and most people measure success by how much money they make or how nice their things are or how much fame, fame they can attain. And as a former basketball player and current basketball coach, I've spent the better part of my life chasing results. You know, I've been in a profession where all that matters is, did you win or did you lose? And, um, you know, you keep your job by producing wins and championships and you lose your job if you lose too much or, you know, don't win often enough. So there's no doubt that results are important and they do matter, but they can't be your why or bad things are probably going to happen. And, you know, bad things like if that's everything to you, you might compromise your character or your integrity to get ahead. You know, you might work your, or, you know, you might, you might be fine with your character and, and integrity. You might work your tail off, finally get the result you're after. And then you just find out how disappointed and maybe even depressed you are because it didn't actually bring you the happiness you thought it would. So like Anson Dorrance said, even the best result we can ever imagine um, dies like a flower. And maybe there's some results that take a little longer than others to die but there's no result um, that has the ability to fulfill us. Um, even though many of us spend a good majority of our lives thinking that there is. So I have one more video clip for you. And um, this is from the same panel and conference as, as, this, as the last one of, of Anson Dorrance. And um, these four guides have all won at an insanely high level um, multiple times. Like they are the definition of success in the sports world. Um, yet listen once again to what they have to say about achievement and fulfillment. So we'll close with two questions and they're very short. Uh, I'm going to ask you to fill in the rest of the sentence. Okay. Each of you will do this. The truth about achievement is working to be the best that you can be. Perspective. It's ephemeral. I don't know what ephemeral is, but I know that it's... <laughs> It's something to do with flowers. <laughs> I, it's um, achievement isn't achievement isn't what you think achievement is. And and fill in this sentence: the key to fulfillment. Um, Self worth have the right priorities. I think it's all about connection. And I would say the same: love the people around you. Thank you, guys. I know there's nothing uh, more difficult than convincing young, energetic college students with the world at their fingertips that landing your dream job or your dream spouse or your dream fill in the blank won't actually satisfy you the way you think it will. But that's kind of my goal for this lecture. And I want to spend the rest of the time uh, talking about what I believe is a fulfilling why. And hopefully, you know, I can give you some ideas for how you might begin to think about your own why and your own set of core values and incorporate those into your life as you move through college. Uh, some of you are just at the start of that journey. Um, and then some of you are, are kind of closing in on the finish line at Bethel and are already thinking about what's next after graduation. And, and I, hope, I hope all of you, um, you know, can really begin to think about where you're at right now and, and uh, who you really want to be and who you want to work to become um, throughout college and then, and then on in your career and in your personal life. Um, I, you know, I know that many of you are already great young leaders and all of you have the potential to become leaders in your school and your community and then eventually in your career and in your family. But I really believe that the sooner and more clearly you have defined, you know, who it is that you want to be and who you want to become, the more effective you're going to be in leading those around you in a purposeful direction. And, you know, um, if, if all of that just sounds bogus and like something you're not interested in, if nothing else, you know, I, I do believe also that having your core values sort of nailed down and being able to speak about them and really having them, you know, like defined, uh, those are really good things to put on a, on a cover letter and a resume and, and great to speak about in an interview. So if, if, if you can't, you know, get feel, feel good about doing this just because I, I believe it's, it's a great way to live your life, then even think about the value of, of knowing these things for, for, for that reason, for getting your, your next job. So I want to kind of move now and take a second to share with you um, our why as a coaching staff at Washington State, you know, as an example. And, 
This is actually the brainchild of our head coach. Her name is Cami Etheridge, and she's another one. If you look her up, um, you know, she probably could have been on this, on this panel that I just showed this video from. Um, she's succeeded at the very highest level, um, you know, has an Olympic gold medal, won a national championship, was national player of the year while she was in college. So she knows also what it's like to sort of be at the top and to, you know, see the, the biggest and, and greatest dreams she could ever imagine sort of realized. But um, so, so another great example that, that this is something that she's come up with and something that I've had an opportunity to watch her think through and fine tune um, over the course of her, over the course of the last six years, which is, which has been the time that she's uh, been a head coach. Close with two. Sorry, I can't control my thing. So we'll close with all right, so this is actually a document that I put together after our first season at Washington State um, to have kind of as a team, kind of like our team shield. And uh, you can tell that I'm certainly not a graphic designer by any stretch of the imagination, um, but hopefully my poor skills at making something that is cosmetically appealing uh, won't distract you too much from the content and the point. But as you can see, um, we wanted to make sure that we defined our why. Uh, we wanted to nail down you know, what is our motivation behind all the work that goes into leading a team to achieve things that are really, really difficult to achieve in a highly competitive arena? And even though the goal or the reason, you know, to be perfectly honest that we're here at Washington State, you know, we're hired to turn this program into a winning program. And there is motivation in seeking success and seeking after the rewards of championships on the court and the rewards of you know, seeing this, this ship sort of turn around and, and move in a good direction and of gaining the respect of our peers and the sports world by accomplishing those big things that we hope we can accomplish. But we know that the rewards of actual championships can't even begin to compare to the rewards of using the day-to-day -day process of striving after those things and striving ap after excellence uh, to build character. So if you read our why statement, you know, to use the process of striving for excellence on the court in the classroom and in the community as an avenue to grow the individual character traits that are necessary to succeed in all facets of life, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and just to have a transformational and uh, growth mindset. Um, you know, you can see that we want to view success not as winning championships or becoming a winning program, but as embracing the day-to-day -day struggle of reaching for those things and reaching for greatness, because we know that in doing that, we're gonna grow the things that really matter. Which takes us to the next uh, slide. Like, what are the things that really matter, that we think really matter? And, um, you know, what are the things that don't die like a flower? Like if we're saying, we know a championship, that's gonna die. We know a big win, that's gonna die. What are the things that don't die? If the ultimate goal isn't those championships and wins, what is our ultimate goal? Well, for us, it's championship character. And this is where the rubber actually meets the road. Exactly what is it that we're trying to, to grow? And at what ways are we trying to get better, you know, as we go through the difficult pro process of striving day after day for the world's definition of success? Well, you can see that we pointed to five core values or character traits that we believe are foundationally important for living life in a way that moves us all toward a higher purpose. And again, these are values that touch every area of life. These are character traits that aren't only specific to sports or athletes. You know, we know that all of our players, um, they're going to have a life or a job after basketball. They're going to have a spouse and they're going to have families and they're going to have friends and coworkers. And we believe that if they learn to be respectful and trustworthy and competitive and tough and accountable, you know, they're gonna make great mothers and great wives and friends and career women and coworkers and on and on. They're gonna have deep and meaningful relationships and they're gonna affect the world in a really positive way. Now, you might look at these core values and, and this is what I hope you can think through like, and maybe you only have three, maybe you only have two, like maybe you've got 10, I don't know. But you know, even you probably look at it and say, well, how can compete have to do with anything besides um, sports or anything besides athletics. And, and if you look at how we've actually defined that word, um, I think the answer is right there. Like we're talking about being better tomorrow than you were today. We're just talking about competing with you yesterday. We're talking about never being satisfied with, 
you know, where you're at and always wanting to grow and learn and, and just get better. And so that's why, you know, we define these things because, you know, if you just threw these words out, every player would have it and ask each player to write down, what does that word mean to you? Everyone would have a completely different definition for those words. So we actually come up with these definitions together with the team and we figure out why it is that we're defining them that way. But that's, that's kind of another, uh, tangent we'll keep we'll keep moving and so um the last page is the how and this really just became our team our set of team rules in a way and again like the neat thing about this is they aren't just a list of rules that the coaches came up with and then told the players here are your rules this is what you need to follow if you follow them you won't be in trouble and if you don't follow them you will be in trouble now these are actually you know behaviors that the players and the coaches brainstorm together and their behaviors that we all agreed are evidence of our five core values. We said, man, what does it look like to be respectful in the classroom? What's it look like to be respectful in the community and in public? What's it look like to be respectful in, on the court and athletically and in the weight room? And so we took those three big areas of their lives and, and really hashed out, this is what respect looks like, this is what compete looks like, this is what toughness, accountability, trust on and on and on. And we came up and obviously this isn't, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, a, a comprehensive list. Um, it's, it's more generalized, but um, you know, these are the things that, that we've all agreed, man, this is how we're going to behave in, in these three arenas of our life. And, you know, you might be thinking at this stage that, well, this is all well and good. And, you know, it's kind of just a trendy thing to do right now because everyone talks about culture and you hear it from sports teams, you hear it from businesses, you know, it's a word that gets tossed around a lot. And, you know, so far, all I've done is basically told you about what our team culture is and, and how we've defined it. But, but the question is, what difference does this really make in the grand scheme of things? Like, what difference does it make for our players individually? What difference does it make for our team as a whole? You know, a lot of sports teams and businesses you know, you've heard it, they worry about their culture and, their, and, and they work on their culture, but they do it for one reason. And that's just to produce more wins or to make more money, to be a more successful business or be viewed, you know, a certain way in the eyes of other people. And all of this defining and identifying behaviors and how we wanna act as a team, for us, if we're not careful, could just be another means to the end goal of winning games and championships, like those businesses and other sports teams I just defined. And so then it just becomes, once again, futile and, and, and meaningless, right? So how do we make our culture, like our why, our what, and our how, the end goal? It comes back around to a huge idea I mentioned a little bit earlier, and that's the process. We have to answer the question, what is success? How do we view success? And, and those, are, those are massive questions to answer. For you guys right now where you're at in life, and it will be for the rest of your life. Those are things you've got to you've got to always maintain perspective about. And you know, this is a huge this is this is so big in an achievement driven world, you know. Like like I've already mentioned, I spent my whole career defining success as accomplishing my next goal on the basketball court. Now as a coach and as someone trying to teach and lead young aspiring athletes, and all of them for sure have the tendency to view success as scoring a lot of points, having a great, you know, stats and winning a game or championships, you know, I, I've become really convinced, um, you know, and really dogmatic that success is really wrapped up in two words, get better. You know, it doesn't matter if you won or lost the game last night, wake up today and get better. It doesn't matter if you failed or aced your last test, go to class today with a focus and a goal of learning more and learning better. It doesn't matter if you had a terrible practice today, you know, or if you had a great practice today, get better tomorrow. And, you know, the theme, I hope, you know, you can hear a theme in those statements I just made that, and, and this is what I want you to hear. It doesn't matter what the result is or was, whether it was good or bad. What matters is that you focus on the process of getting better. And, um, you know, if you think back to our why statement, we call this a growth mindset. And, you know, there, there's a lot in that. Like, it seems simple to say, yeah, a growth mindset. But, you know, what we really mean by that is, you know, we acknowledge and we admit that, man, none of us walking on planet Earth right now will ever be in our lifetime perfectly respectful, 
perfectly trustworthy, perfectly competitive, perfectly tough, or perfectly accountable. If you take our core values as an example, you know, you could end any of those perfectly statements with, with, you know, any big character trait that we aspire toward, right? Like every single one of us, you know, in our basketball program, every single one of us walking on this earth is on a journey um, to grow in those areas. And, you know, hopefully for the rest of our lives, because every new chapter, even, you know, our players, if you take them as an example, take you guys after college, like every new chapter um, will bring us more opportunities to work on, on, on those character traits. And, you know, one of the greatest, the greatest things that I've found about, you know, living in a highly competitive environment and in a business where, you know, I do feel pressure for high achievement or for getting big results is that when you focus on the process of just trying your guts out to get better, it's really, really incredibly freeing. You know, you can't allow your self-worth to be wrapped up in, did you win or lose? It's got to be found rather in your pursuit of growing in things like, again, for me, trustworthiness. I want to grow in selflessness and respect and competitiveness and grit. And the list goes on. And, and those characteristics, they grow while you chase those wins and results with all that you have. So kind of like this picture right here, you know, like success isn't about what you'll get in the end. So you're chasing that. You're, you're chasing that trophy, right? Like you're pushing that rock so hard trying to get up that hill to get that trophy but success is the strength that you're gaining in that process of going after that trophy and you know i i just i love i love the thought of that and i love the visual of that and um you know i i think again going back to what i was just talking about you know when you focus on that process and becoming strong and, and growing your character traits in that process of pushing that rock up that hill toward that thing that that you're trying to attain you know you really become free from the anxiety and the emotional highs and lows that come with just being focused on the goal and on the outcome so i really want to just encourage you today to to take time and think about your why like your why for being at Bethel College right now, your why as you move on to whatever is next, like write it down. And instead of focusing on, on, on what you want to achieve, focus on the process of getting there, you know? And, and like I said, I'm not opposed to goals, like set big goals for yourself. They're, that's so important. Pursue your dreams, have dreams, have big dreams, you know? Don't set the bar low so it's easy to reach. Set it high so that you have to reach and reach and reach and reach hard. You know, set it so high that you, you're, you're pretty much certain to fail many times before you actually um, succeed. And in those failures and disappointments, become a better person, you know, grow in, grow in your core values. Man, there's no, there, there's, there's no better way to grow in, in humility and courage and grit and work ethic and determination than to fail and fail and fail and fail. Man, those things are just going to grow. The more, that, the more that you're able to challenge yourself and put yourself in those sorts of situations. And, you know, I, I, do, I do just want to touch too, because I know even in our why, we, we talked about the spiritual side as well. And, and I think it's so important for, for me personally to share, you know, that, that this way of thinking, like this process thinking, a focus on, on my character, who I am and who I'm becoming, it, it actually, it correlates so closely with my faith. and. Um, you know, as a Christian, I know that my ultimate purpose is to bring God glory by, be, by becoming more Christ-like, little by little by little and day by day by day, striving so imperfectly, um, you know, through every situation and every interaction to reflect God's character to the world around me and the people I get to interact with. And, you know, I will never arrive or do this perfectly either while I'm here on this earth, but getting better is still the mission and the focused, um, focus. And, you know, there's certainly great fulfillment um, and satisfaction in living for the greatest purpose, which, you know, to me, that's the glory of God. So I guess if there's something, you know, that I wish I knew when I was your age, um, something I wish people would have told me when I was your age, it's the truth about achievement and, and the truth about reaching your goals and getting the results that, that you want and, and that you think are gonna make you happy. 
And um, that truth is just that no result or achievement on this earth is going to bring you lasting happiness or, or fulfillment. So free yourself from finding your identity and in, in what you accomplish or don't accomplish. You know, free yourself by, by finding your why and who you're becoming. Um, finding your why in, in growing the character traits, the things that you really value and who you are as a person. And, um, and enjoy your journey. Thanks so much for uh, listening to this talk and uh, best of luck to all of you. I hope you guys have an awesome year. Um, and uh, thanks again.